and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to be talking about the binomial theorem and some of the applications of it. The binomial theorem. So we can say for any numbers x and y and for a natural number n. So x and y can be any numbers. They can be real numbers, rational numbers, complex numbers. doesn't matter. This will work for any numbers. x plus y to the power n is equal to the sum, which ranges k from 0 to n, of n choose k times x to the power n minus k times y to the power k. Okay. Now this is going to work for any expansion. And, and we'll do some examples of this later, but first I want to relate this to choices. So let's consider x plus y to the n. Now we can think of this product of these factors, x plus y, as a process of decision making. So if we think of each factor, x plus y, as an object in a set of size n, we can think of uh, x as choosing that object and y as not choosing that object. So for example, let's look at x plus y cubed. By our binomial theorem, this is going to be x cubed when k equals 0, plus 3 choose 1, which is 3, x to the 2, y to the 1, when k equals 1. When k equals 2, I have 3 choose 2, which is 3, x to the 3 minus 2, which is 1, y to the k, which is 2. And when k equals 3, I have 3 choose 3, which is 1, x to the 0, y cubed. So in other words, there is one way to choose all three objects, right? In this multiplication process, if we look at the process where x is chosen in all three of these, well, that gives me my x cubed. I have a coefficient of 1, so there's only one way for me to get x cubed from this product. Or in other words, there's only one way for me to choose every object. We said that x was choosing that object, represented by x plus y, and y was not choosing that object. Now there's going to be three ways to choose one object, or sorry, to choose two objects. Oh, sorry, this is, yeah, all three objects. Three ways to choose two objects, right? That's given by this term right here, 3 times x squared y. This x squared means I've chosen two objects, and there are three different ways for me to do that. There were three different ways for me to arrange this product where two of the terms are represented by x and one of the terms is represented by y. Similarly, there's uh, three ways to choose one object, and there is one way to not choose any objects or to choose zero objects, right? So this is how we relate this binomial theorem to our choice function. So we can think of all of the coefficients in this expansion as being choice functions, and in fact that's what's given to us by our actual formula, it is choice functions, but that's an intuitive way of understanding why the choice functions are so intimately related to the product expansion of x plus y to some power of n. Now we have some interesting consequences that I want to talk about. First of all, 2 to the n, we can write this as 1 plus 1 to the n, which by our binomial theorem is k ranging from 0 to n of n choose k, 1 to the n minus k times 1 to the k. Now this 1 to the n minus k and 1 to the k, they're always 1. So this is just the sum of all of my binomial coefficients n choose k for a particular value of n. So an immediate theorem that we can have from this theorem, this is coming back to our set theory, 
So let's let s be a set of size s, or in other words, where the order of s equals little s. Then the order of the power set of s, remember this notation means power set, this is going to be 2 to the power s. Right? And this is just immediate from what we have up here. So recall that a power set of s is the set of all possible subsets of s. Now we know that with our binomial coefficients or our selection function or choice function here, for each value of k, n choose k is the number of subsets of a set of size n which have a size k. So n choose 0 is how many subsets there are of size 0. n choose 1 is how many subsets there are of size 1, etc. So looking back down here, my power set is going to contain all of these subsets up here. So in other words, the number of subsets is going to be this total sum here, the sum of all of the different um, choice functions for a particular subset size. And we just found that to be 2 to the n. So that's exactly what we have here, 2 to the s. I have my set here is of size s instead of size n. Now another quick result, if we look at 0, the interesting result, 0, I could write this as 1 plus negative 1 to the n. So this is going to be the sum where k goes from 0 to n of n choose k times 1 to the n minus k times negative 1 to the k. Now what all this is doing, this 1 is always going to be 1, but this negative 1 to the k, this is going to be a negative 1 when k is odd and a positive 1 when k is even. So expanding this out, this is going to be n choose 0 minus, because here my k is 1, so it's odd, n choose 1. When k is 2, it's even, so plus n choose 2 minus n choose 3 plus and so on. Now because this um, sum equals 0, I can add my odd value of k choice functions to both sides, and I get this result that all of the odd values of k, n choose 1 plus n choose 3 plus and so on, is equal to the sum of the coefficients for even values of k, n choose 0 plus n choose 2 plus and so on. So all of my odd k choice functions are equal to the sum of all of my even k choice functions. Okay. So that's the binomial theorem in a nutshell, and in the next um, video we're going to go over some examples where we can relate this to counting and also talk about using the binomial theorem for the expansion of these binomials, and we'll see you there.